Hello, in this video, let's take apart a game theory problem, otherwise known as a game. So we end up with a real world type issue like, should United Airlines spend more money on advertising? What do we know about United Airlines? Well, they're in some sort of interconnected um, environment. We're going to call that a game. That's what we call these things in economics. And we've got Chicago to St. Louis, short little flight. I've been on it. Uh, okay, so we've get, we've been given the payoff matrix, which is just uh, the results of American Airlines choices given United's choices and United's choices given American Airlines choices. So when I say solve the game, you can read all this stuff. This is just how to create the payoff matrix, and then like this is a longer version of what I'm about to do. Okay, so what we want to do is just say, hey, if American Airlines chooses to raise ad spending uh, versus leave ad spending alone, these are these are called strategies. Okay, what is United better off doing? Okay, so United strategy, given that American is going to raise ad spending, United is better off to increase its ad spending because they'll make 550 profit. Uh, or rather 5,500 profit rather than 2,000, okay? Then we're going to do the same thing. Assume that American leaves ad spending alone. Uh, what's better for United to raise ad and get 8,000 8, uh, profit or leave ad spending alone? $6,000 of profit. It's better to get 8,000 than 6,000, so I'm going to circle that, okay? Now, given that uh, regardless of American's choice, United is always better off, that's what's known as a dominant strategy. United is always better off raising ad spending. This means that they have a dominant strategy to raise ad spending. Okay. Now let's look at Americans' choices. Okay. So if United chooses to raise ad spending, what's better off for American? Well, 5,500 is better than 2,000. So there you go. Okay. And then if United decides to leave ad spending the same, then what's better for American? 8,000 or 6,000, it's better for 8,000, okay? So it turns out that American also has a dominant strategy to raise ad spending, okay? Now, because I circled both of these uh, and I have that outcome like that, that's, our, that's what's called our Nash equilibrium. Okay, we, we name it after an economist named John Nash, really a mathematician, but whatever. Um, so this is the, and, and one way to think about this is, is the most likely outcome. Okay, so should United Airlines spend more money in advertising? Well, the answer is no, because they'd actually be better off in this quadrant here, but they're going to because they don't know what Americans going to do. So if in a competitive environment, this Nash equilibrium is going to result in both firms earning $5,500 which is a worse outcome than if they had some kind of agreement to not advertise and earn $6,000. But since the two parties can't trust each other, because that kind of agreement is actually illegal, we will end up at this Nash equilibrium that is in fact worse than the cooperative agreement or, or, or outcome rather, which means that this is what's called a prisoner's dilemma. Okay, The competitive result is worse than the cooperative result, but the cooperative result isn't going to happen because both parties have an incentive and a dominant strategy pushing them towards this outcome. 